Ano na pala kayo mga kapatid sa kasaysayan, magandang araw, ako po pala si Ate Gay. Narin na tayo sa huling bahati ng itong basit sa daloy ng kasaysayan. Ayun, nakikita nyo may dumaraan pang bar sa likod. Ayan. Ang ilog basit sa daloy ng kasaysayan ay hatid sa inyo ng Museo El Deposito sa pagdiriwang ng Museums and Galleries Bank. Ang Ilog Pasig ay may tuturing na pinakamahalagang daan patungo sa mga importanteng lugar sa kamayinilaan. May eksiman ito kung may tuturing kumpara sa mga ilog sa Pilipinas, mahaba naman ang naging kasaysayan nito. Ang Ilog Pasig ay may habang 27 km, lalim na 18 kalampakan, at lapad na siyang naputisang metro sa ilang bahagi ng ilog. Dahil sa pag-usbong ng komerso at pagdami ng infrastruktura sa paligid nito, nabawasan na ang kalidad ng tubig. 1930s, nang kaunti na lamang ang isdang mauhuli rito. 1950s, ay kaunti na lamang din ang nagbigo at naglalaban dito. 1960s ay pinagbawal na ang paligo at paglalaban nito. 1970s ay kaunti na lamang ang isang nito at bumaho na rin ang tubig. 1980s ay pinagbawal na ng sunuyan ang pangingisda sa ilog. At 1990s ayon sa DNR ay tinuturing ng biologically dead ang ilog passive. Upang ipaliwanag sa atin ang mga naging kasaysayan sa paligid ng Ilog Pasig. Makakasama natin ngayon, live na live from Eastern Europe, ang ating tagapagsalita. Our guest speaker for this afternoon is a full-time, currently on a study leave, faculty member of the Department of History of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Manila. He is a graduate of Master in Asian Studies major in Northeast Asian Studies in the Asian Center of UP Diliman, and currently taking a Master of Arts in History in the Public Sphere Program of the Central European University in Budapest, Hungary, and Vienna, Austria, under the Erasmus Mandus Joint Master's Degree Scholarship awarded by the European Union. He has also participated and pre presented in various conferences like in the Binghamton University, State University of New York, Japan ASEAN Scholar Summit, and Summit in Universitas Indonesia, 14 Singapore Graduate Forum on Southeast Asian Studies in the National University of Singapore, and University of Nottingham's Second Culture of Occupation in the 20th Century of Asia Conference. His research interests include, but not limited, to Asian studies, local and oral history, Japanese occupation in the Philippines, and public sphere. Let us all welcome Mr. Jefferson R. Mendez. Salita na ako? Okay. Hello everyone. Okay, um, 
good afternoon and a uh, pleasant morning here in my location. So I'm very thankful for the invitation to speak as part of the uh, national celebration for the uh, galleries and uh, museums uh, month in the Philippines. So I'm going to, to speak uh, about uh, the topic uh, which is very interesting um, about uh, the Pasig River. So uh, I was tasked to discuss uh, 19th century Pasig River um, on its economic and uh, political environment. Okay, so I hope you are all all safe because I've heard uh, may bagyo sa Pilipinas. So for my uh, to my family, uh, please uh, be safe. I'm, I'm praying for you all. And shout out sa mga uh, friends, former students, and uh, colleagues na nanonood. Okay? So to start, I need to share my screen for you to see my presentation. So I prepared a very short uh, presentation for this lecture. So yeah. Okay, so nakikita nyo ba yung PowerPoint ko? I hope so. Okay, so um, yeah, um, this presentation for uh, today's lecture is uh, entitled The Political and Economic History of Pasig River. So like what I've said earlier, uh, we're actually tracing uh, to a specific dimension of uh, the history of uh, the Pasig River during 19th century. So this is a political and economic uh, histories. So later on, I'm going to expound uh, different uh, specific uh, uh, skills or uh, historical phenomenon na uh, itatouch ko in this lecture. Okay. And uh, before I proceed with my, my lecture, um, of course, I would like to uh, to uh, connect this presentation with uh, our celebration. I think this is the last day of uh, our uh, national celebration of Museums and Galleries Month. So this, uh, this event is actually part of uh, the month-long celebration of Museo El Deposito. So this is one of the many uh, museums of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines who have uh, offered uh, public history and, and different aspect of uh, practical learning and approach uh, for us to uh, to see uh, history in action. So um, in my lecture for today, uh, of course, I'm going to connect the idea of water, river, and our everyday living. So how uh, the, the, the Filipino people in general uh, was uh, actually uh, part of a, a greater uh, system call, called the, the water world. Diba? Paano, uh, paano tayo nabibilang sa, sa ganitong konsepto? So, um, yeah. Um, uh, again, um, congrats uh, sa NHCP for this uh, very fruitful uh, celebration of uh, the National uh, Museum and Galleries Month. Okay? So to start, uh, I have here uh, some um, outline of my uh, presentation. So, okay, so to start, I'm going to introduce my topic. And uh, uh, of course, uh, what are the specific, uh, uh, specific scope of, of this presentation? Then I'm going to touch uh, a quick uh, run with a historical uh, take about uh, the idea of river as well as water um, in, in the past. So it's not only in the Philippines, but I'm going to connect it with Southeast Asia since my major interest is about Asian studies. My first MA was in Asian studies. So of course, it's, uh, it's important to connect our uh, local experiences with rivers or, or water um, with our with other peripheries in in Asia, particularly Southeast Asia. Then um, uh, from from Southeast Asia, Asia, we're going to touch uh, the, the Philippine setup. So, what are the the histories behind Pasig River? 
um, in the national uh, uh, history of the Philippines. So, so it's just a quick run through of uh, the geopolitical uh, engagement um, na related sa Pasig River. Then my two major uh, assignment for this lecture, so political, so I have this uh, chapter about polities and power structures in 19th century Pasig River. And lastly is uh, the economic environment and transactions within Pasig River. So, well, for uh, those uh, interested in political economy, uh, I might touch some uh, development, underdevelopment, and, and issues related to uh, politics and economics um, in, in, in this presentation, but it's not that, uh, that uh, complex. Diba? Because we all know na sobrang lawak ng uh, ng nakasaysayan ng Ilog Pasig. Actually, it's not only in the Pasig uh, city itself, but it also has some huge impact in the whole Metro Manila and in the whole uh, Philippines at large. Then lastly, I will not give a conclusion, but I'm going to uh, to reflect on some uh, uh, takeaways uh, for this presentation. Okay? Okay, what happened? Okay, so to start, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, first introduce the, the subject matter, which is river. So uh, when, when talking about uh, river, it, it, it's not about the, uh, the bodies of water alone, but it also has something to do with the water. Okay, so when you say river, of course, a Pasig River is one of the most important uh, bodies of water in the Philippines and its history. Though it's not the longest because we have Rio Grande de Cagayan or the Cagayan River as the longest uh, river in the entire archipelago, Pasig plays a, uh, or situated in a very important position in, in our history because it has uh, a major uh, uh, help and of course uh, some a negative effect uh, in, in the Philippine uh, in the Philippine past. Okay, so dito, titignan natin yung uh, river, both the bodies of water and water itself. So ano ba yung interesting sa dalawang yan? We all know that um, in, in history, um, everything that happened in the past ay uh, hindi na mangyayari. Diba? It's, it's uh, impossible for us to recreate the past. Though historians are, are here to uh, to uh, to study and to uh, analyze uh, the past using the present theories and methodologies in order to prepare for for the future uh, yung yung kasaysayan yung mga nangyayari na sa kasaysayan na hindi na mababalik pero in too big diba if you're going to to see the natural nature of water um, it's ano eh, it's uh, eternal diba kung ano yung too big nung uh, panahon ng prehistorico that's the same water na, na meron, diba? the composition, the volume, and uh, the, the nature itself, it's, it's water. So it, water is a very unique uh, uh, matter. And in, in, in that aspect, I think it's very uh, important to, uh, to see the real importance of uh, water and its system in, in the study of uh, history. Okay? So to start, uh, let's deal with uh, the idea of water world. Okay? So um, if you're very fond of uh, studying Southeast Asian history, I think it's, uh, no, it's normal or it's, uh, it's normal for you to encounter the idea of a water world. Why? Because um, in, in Southeast Asia, well, according to Nicholas Starling, um, we have three basic way to characterize Southeast Asia. The first one, it's a water world. Uh, it has a water world system or it follows the idea of talasocracy from the old Greek uh, tradition. Second, it has uh, the, the idea of mandala. Well, um, it, it talks about power and the idea of different uh, monarchy, royalty situated in different geopolitical uh, setup. In, in Southeast Asian kingdoms. And lastly is syncretism. So these three are major unique aspect of uh, Southeast Asia to other region in Asia and in the world. So don't time to focus on water world. So what do you mean about water world? Um, like, well, like what I've said, uh, it uh, was actually rooted from the idea of uh, 
uh, talasocracy, very similar with uh, this Greek ideology of talasocracy. So if you're going to uh, reflect on our map, diba? Southeast Asia is composed of two uh, major uh, groupings diba? of island. One is archipelagic and the other one is continental uh, Southeast Asia. Okay? So uh, yung dalawang yun, uh, parehas silang naliligiran ng tubig. Okay? So uh, these two groupings of islands and, and uh, uh, terrestrial land in, in Southeast Asia, uh, if you're going to reflect on, on the map, ay napapaligiran sila ng, ng, ng tubig. Diba? So sobrang halaga nung, nung water system. Um, in discussing Southeast Asian history. Why? Because it holds the evidence of expansion of hominids. We all know that uh, aside from Africa uh, and uh, Australia, uh, Aust- uh, Australia and Oceania, uh, nandito sa Southeast Asia yung uh, mga oldest remains of human hominids. So let's ask why. Diba? What would be the reason why Uh, uh, archaeologists or anthropologists found a lot of evidences of human activities during prehistorical times in this specific region in Asia. Diba? So perhaps uh, the travel or the migration, early travel and prehistorical migration of different people from one place to another, diba? whom we called as uh, Great Austronesian migration, diba? in, well, in the theory of uh, Dr. Zeus Salazar and several other um, Austronesianists, diba? merong nagaganap na paglalakbay. How? Because of bodies of water, the oceans, the seas, the oceans. Diba? Uh, yes, they separate us, diba? our island from another. But if you're going to think of it in a larger picture, it also connects us. Diba? all what we need to do is to have uh, an instrument diba? or uh, a material for us to do the traveling. Diba? Kaya nga dun sa, uh, sa Moana, diba? pinapakita yung idea ng akatig or yung, yung konsepto ng uh, bangka diba? na very similar all throughout Southeast Asia diba? and Austronesia because we're, we're actually belong or uh, we're part of a... Uh, a Uh, family, single family. So it witnessed earliest human sea crossing. So through the bodies of water, makikita niyo yung exchanges diba, na, na, na naganap. That's why if you're going to reflect on other uh, histories from our neighboring states in Southeast Asia, you can find similar cultural and uh, uh, national traits or uh, customs. Diba? Katulad ng paggagawa, paggawa ng bangka, Diba yung pagbubuo ng uh, katig ng bangka, di ba? Na may ganun na tayong teknolohiya, di ba? Pangingisda, paglalayag. Di ba? That's very normal in, in Southeast Asia. It's common uh, attribution of uh, Southeast Asian people. So it also provides an environmental backdrop for the diaspora of a single ethnolinguistic group in the history of mankind. So this is uh, the largest, if, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, the Austronesian language, di ba? the migration of uh, these people that carries this unique language from north or south diba hindi pa natin uh, well ako uh, the, the idea of uh, the, the the specific uh, notion of uh, how they travel diba from south ba or mula sa taas uh, hindi naman masyadong mahalaga but the idea is they travel no and through that migration or travel uh, they were able to share and to uh, cascade their culture. Kaya nga kung ano yung meron sa atin, normal, in, normal na may makikita kang similarities with other Southeast Asian people, Aust- Austronesians, di ba, sa Taiwan, etc. So it also key, holds key to the domestication of rice. No? So uh, the most staple food in Southeast Asia is rice. That's why the logo of ASEAN, di ba, makikita nyo, it's about rice. Because same with uh, the European idea of architecture, that uh, really binds the European culture uh, sa atin, rice. So paano napakalat yung uh, kultura ng pagkain, pagtanim uh, ng, ng, ng palay sa buong Southeast Asia? It's about traveling, di ba? this migration na powered by water. Okay? So dito, makikita nyo, uh, there's this state of, it, uh, state of flux, di ba? that water as a deadly and a life-giving force uh, 
dito sa ating region. So uh, it's deadly because uh, you know in the Philippine setup uh, makikita ninyo na uh, parati tayong daanan ng bagyo like for example uh, uh, this rate of time uh, I know you're going to experience uh, a, a very challenging time because uh, uh, La Nina or Tagula na sa Pilipinas. So uh, isa yon sa pinaka uh, uh, deadly uh, uh, attribution ng, ng region natin because daanan ng bagyo, therefore yung tubig, uh, it keep on rising, di ba? high tide and one of its uh, uh, output is too much flooding and uh, pag-wash out ng dolomite. So, ang, ang idea is, maybe sabi ng government, um, wash in or pabalik, babalik din daw or magtatambak sila ulit. But um, here, uh, may flux, diba? state of flux. Diba? It, it has a boon or, or bain impact diba? yung, yung water. Diba? So, yung titignan natin today. So, as it was exposed to the sea, uh, Southeast Asia was more accessible to outside political, economic, and cultural influences than many landlocked regions. That's why many Southeast Asian uh, societies were uh, under uh, Western uh, colonization. Why? Because we're open. Uh, we, majority of uh, Southeast Asian societies has uh, water boundaries. So sobrang lapitin natin sa mga uh, mga mananakop, di ba? Kaya sa Pilipinas, di ba? Nung, nung napadpad ang grupo ni Magellan, di ba? Nung 15th uh, century sa uh, sa Limasawa, sa isa Limasawa, di ba? They duck or they they arrive in in our uh, island in this archipelago, di ba? Using uh, a sea route, di ba? So uh, hindi lang yan sa Indonesia, yung mga Dutch nung nakapunta doon, they also use uh, uh, bodies of water in order to uh, to travel from the west to the east. No? So uh, makikita nyo dito na um, we're very prone to uh, access of a uh, foreign uh, invasion. So Southeast Asia was never an empire on its own, right? Or even belong in its entirety to any one empire. So this is perhaps one of the major uniqueness of uh, our region, Southeast Asia to India or China. Why? Because uh, we weren't able to create uh, a solid empire because uh, why? I think it's because of the, the the rivers or the bodies of water that we have. It separates lo different localities or different small empires in in Southeast Asia. Diba? Um, hindi naman natin masasabi na walang empire because um, in Southeast Asia there are also empires created in the prehistorical times. We have Cambodia Desa. In mainland Southeast Asia, we also have uh, Srivijayan, Majapahit empires, diba? So meron, pero hiwa-hiwalay. I think it's very unique uh, because of the, uh, the, the flow of uh, different bodies of water, diba? It separates and at the same time, it creates uh, a local polity on, on different regions in Asia, diba? That's why it, it has a political fragmented uh, distribution of power in the whole Southeast Asia. Then, easy access via the sea routes to the area made it quite vulnerable to political control by strong outsiders. So, ito yung explain ko kanina. So, because of different sea routes, openness of our borders, diba, it uh, made possible to uh, the Westerners to arrive easily in our uh, region and perhaps started to, to colonize us okay so it's it's really a big disadvantage political disadvantage to uh, 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 southeast asia so nakita natin dito yung yung bodies of water not only rivers but also uh, seas and oceans they have this uh, uh, negative uh, attribution diba, in the creation of uh, southeast asian history as a matter of fact um, it's isa siya sa malaking role kung bakit uh, sinakop or napadpad ang mga Europeans sa, sa, sa Southeast Asia. Okay? So, um, what else? Um, and if you're going to reflect more on the idea of uh, uh, as water world, diba? sa, sa Southeast Asia, it's, it's common to celebrate uh, water festivals. Okay? In Thailand, we have Songkran, 
Uh, same with Lao. Um, in Myanmar, they also have this Buddhist. Yeah, I think in in many Buddhist tradition, water is reflected as life. Diba? The same with uh, our idea of uh, Christianity or Catholicism in the Philippines. Diba? What is the major uh, material? Uh, what is the most important material used for baptism? It's water, right? right? Sea or holy water. Pa yan. So we have this uh, concept of uh, celebration then. Uh, so it's not only negative, but water, water uh, the concept of water in Southeast Asia holds the, the idea of uh, life as well as celebration. Because attached to the concept of water is longevity, And at the same time, connection through time and space. Okay, so so now let's see the the possession of a uh, Pasig River uh, in the flow of Philippine history. Okay, so we have a very long uh, period of a uh, history in the Philippines, and I, I think um, ngayon as I've uh, studied other uh, histories in the world, particularly in Europe. Uh, we have a lot to celebrate uh, the, the the mini battle or those small uh, revolutions that we have uh, i think we should uh, know more about it because it has a similar uh, 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 interaction or uh, learning sa mga uh, nangyari dito sa europe it, they have some similarities and at the same time you can we can learn a lot from 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 it uh, based on our authentic Uh, knowledge as a Filipino people. So, uh, passing in the flow of uh, Philippine history. Um, so, let's start with, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina pala, um, the, the, the river itself. So, it's not only about the river as a body, as a body of water, but yung water din mismo, kung paano siya nakakatulong, paano siya nakakapirwisyo sa, sa tao at sa lipunan in general. So sa mapa na to, I think it's one of the the, the oldest uh, map uh, created during uh, Spanish colonial time. So makikita nyo this uh, side, um, it locates uh, the Pasig River. And uh, sa mga cartographer and sa mga historian, I think it's uh, very common to it's it's normal to see Pasig River in the map of Metro Manila and in the Philippines. Why? Because ganun siya kahalaga. 'Di ba? Ganun ka ka importante yung yung role ng ng ilog na to sa pagbabaybay ng uh, kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. So titingnan natin ngayon 'yon. Very quickly. Okay, so in pre-colonial period, ayan makikita niyo na naman sa sa map Um, uh, may river and at the same time it highlight the uh, development that took place during the arrival of the colonizers so here uh, what you're going to to uh, to see is uh, how the local uh, scenes change when the colonizers arrive so of course during pre-colonial period we have this idea of a simple form of living so Uh, Charles uh, Boxer uh, uh, was able to collect uh, different uh, a manuscript or anthology of different uh, illustrations of uh, indigenous uh, peoples in this archipelago. So that's uh, during the time of the Spaniards. So it was the Spaniards who created these illustrations. Diba? Kung paano nila nakita yung mga katutubo dito sa kapuluan natin. So dito makikita nyo sa sa ebidensya na to sa Boxer Codex that we have this kind of uh, very simple kind of uh, living diba we we have this communal uh, living and it's simple uh, because we are part of different barangays or in Bisaya Banwa and in in the Muslim region it's uh, it's uh, what you call this kampong so uh, here Uh, each uh, polities or each groupings, they subscribe to local uh, systems and customs. So sinasabi nga ni, ni Boxer, uh, sinasabi nga ng Boxer Codex, di ba, makikita nyo dito yung mga kostumbre or yung mga uh, gawi ng mga tao uh, na bago, bago dumating yung mga mananakop na Kastila at uh, nung dumating na yung mga mananakop na Kastila. So... Um, ano yung pinapakita nito? 
the, the people are are already creating their lives. Diba? Our ancestors, they have these uh, customs and uh, practices already. Okay? Though it's, uh, it's simple or it's not uh, fitted to the, the customs or tradition being uh, done in the West or in the Europe, uh, makikita nyo na meron tayong sariling uh, customs and practices. Diba? So let's start with the Tagalogs. Okay? So one of the major uh, importance of uh, this Boxer Codex is the, the, the real picture or illustration itself of uh, the locals, diba? particularly the Tagalog. So saan ba galing yung name na Tagalog? Well, we all know that it came from Taga, Ilog. Diba? So it has this uh, particular uh, uh, notion of uh, root from the river, diba? Taga, Ilog. So, dito, uh, they were called as Tagalog or Tagailog because they follow the, the river. Diba? They, they live in a linear form. Why? Because they follow river. And same with other civilizations in the world, early civilizations in the world, uh, they, they've got their resources or they, their, their ways of living in, in this body of water. That's why it's uh, common to, to see them live within the, the river or near the bodies of, uh, of river. Di ba? Katulad nun sa uh, Mesopotamian civilization. Di ba? San ba umusbong ang, ang, ang uh, earliest uh, civilization in the world sa Mesopotamia? Di ba? It's in the body, near the bodies of water of Tigris and Euphrates. Same with uh, in India, di ba? Um, in the... Uh, Indus Valley civilization. So sa, sa river, no? kaya siya tinawag na Tagalog. So dito, makikita ninyo na yung simpleng pamumuhay o yung payak na pamumuhay ng ating mga katutubong uh, Tagalog, di ba? yan ay umusbong sa pamamagitan ng tulong o ginhawang na kukuha sa uh, ilog. Di ba? So sa tabi ng ilog. Kaya sila tinawag na Tagalog. So in those uh, kind of uh, uh, ways of living, they develop uh, uh, they develop a kind of uh, customs and culture. Diba? So nakita nyo, naging hun hunter and gatherer. At the same time, they, they became plant, uh, they became rice uh, plant, naging plantito at plantita sila. Diba? Pero ang una nilang tinanim ay uh, bigas. Okay? And at the same time, uh, they uh, have this uh, bills and barrow, barrow and some uh, sibat, di ba? Na kinuha din nila sa kakahuyan, di ba? Or uh, kapaligiran na meron sila. Okay? Some other pictures. And um, in that aspect, uh, they were able to develop uh, their own communal living, di ba? Their own unique uh, sense of living, di ba? Sinasabi nga yan ni Felipe uh, Landa Hucano sa kanyang Sulod Society na mula sa dagat, dinal dinala ang sistemang uh, politika sa lupa, di ba? Gamit ang uh, bangka, di ba? Yung balang balang ay, di ba? So from from the bodies of water, they were able to create uh, a notion of polity in in land, di ba? By uh, using uh, the knowledges that they've got from their migration. No, kaya nga uh, yung ating smallest political unit, which is barangay, it was rooted from uh, the, the ship itself, di ba? Balangay or Balangay. No? So, nung nabuo na yon, nabuo yung barangay, uh, banua sa mga Bisaya uh, at uh, sa mga sa, sa, sa South, sa mga Muslim, iba rin, it's kampong. Uh, nagkaroon sila ng uh, pagbubuo ng, uh, ng what you call this, uh, kinship system. No? So, dyan na lumabas ang mga Maharlika, di ba? Na binubuo ng mga datu, uh, sultan, raja, mga asawa nila, kapamilya nila at ng asawa nila at yung tinatawag nating elite uh, uh, system during prehistorical time. So this aristocrat, uh, they, they, they've got their power from their resources. Usually, ang mga pinakamalakas na barang barangay or banwa, sila yung mga malapit sa katubigan, lalo na ang uh, Ilog Pasig. Diba? So one good example is the Sultanate of Manila. So we all know that uh, before the arrival of uh, the Spaniards, the Sultanate of Manila was really a powerful 
uh, Muslim Sultanate, not only in this archipelago, but also in the whole uh, Southeast Asian region. As a matter of fact, it has uh, a strong network with uh, other empires. Diba? Uh, uh, what you call this? Uh, uh, other empires in Southeast Asia, like Srivijayan uh, and Majapahit empires. Diba? So, ano ba yung naging lakas ng, ng uh, Sultanate of Manila? Well, before, uh, during the, the, uh, before the arrival of the, the, the Spaniards, uh, it has this uh, play of power all throughout Luzon or Luzong, di ba? Yung pataas. Kasi sa baba, iba naman. We have the Sultanate of Sulu and the Sultanate of Maguindanao. So here, uh, what made the Sultanate of Manila very unique compared to other sultanate in the south, is its river system. Okay? So imagine we have this uh, river system uh, called the Pasig River. And during that time, Pasig River stretches not only in Metro Manila or in this region of uh, NCR as far as uh, northern Luzon. Diba? In uh, Pampanga and in, uh, uh, as far as Pangasinan, di ba? Doon lumalabas yung mga uh, kipot or yung mga, what you call this, kanal, uh, di ba? Ang actually nakaka-travel nga ang mga uh, Kastila di ba? at ang mga sinaunang Pilipino mula Sultanato ng Maynila papunta sa taas, no? So uh, dito, nabuo yung, uh, yung konsepto ng kapangyarihan sa mga nagaharing tao base sa resources na accumulate nila from Uh, the river, di ba? Or from uh, the bodies of water. Uh, uh, malapit yung kanilang uh, mini empire na, na tinayo, di ba? Which is barangay or banwa. So yun yung rason kung bakit uh, nagkaroon ng uh, sepa- uh, separation of power from from different uh, mini entity, di ba? Or, or uh, sultanate system, di ba? Sa, sa sultanato ng Manila, binubuo pa to ng mas maliliit na na uh, what you call this a political unit or uh, like the Tundun Confederation di ba, na mag stretch hanggang Pampanga. So uh, makikita natin na yung pagbubuo ng Sultanato at nun itong, nitong mga mini empire na to nung prehistorical period ay dahil din sa connection nila sa Ilog Pasig. Okay? So what else? Um, hmm the culture okay so sa culture natin makikita na um ang laki ng impluwensya ng tubig di ba the, the water itself why um sa mga tatu di ba at sa uh, sa titik na meron tayo which is baybayin nung sinaunang panahon binubuo to ng alon or ng wave mismo ng uh, karagatan or ng tubig na meron tayo kasi makikita natin yung connection ng ng mga tao ng mga sinaunang tao our ancestors to these bodies of water they felt that they they were connected with uh, the water because water is life diba water is uh, uh, a celebration so yung mga titik ng baybayin ay kinuha din sa uh, sa, sa tubig diba or hinugis sa, sa tubig uh, marami pa pero doon tayo sa, sa focus ng lecture ko sorry for the time Uh, so now let's proceed with the early Spanish colonial period. So nung dumating yung mga mananakop, uh, they were able to map, uh, they were able to create uh, formal maps and, and different, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, pictures and sketches of the entire uh, uh, territory na, na tinayo nilang Spanish colonial government. Okay? So in this map, makikita ninyo na uh, nasa gitna yung Pasig River. Ayan, so this one, Rio, Pasig. So bakit, ano yung pinapakita ng mapa na to? Diba? So makikita ninyo yung, uh, yung role nung, nung river in establishing this, this uh, colonial government. Diba? That the, the authority, the colonial authority, or the Spanish regime during this time, uh, 1898 yung, yung date ng map, they, they wanted to, to see the 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 whole territory and how they will navigate this uh, special body uh, of water at the middle diba kasi yung pasig yung separate sa manila eh. um the other half of manila 
diba? from intramuros side to the other side. So, napakalaki ng role niya, not only in transportation, but in creating uh, political power of the, of the Spaniards during the colonial times. Okay? So, um, dahil doon, um, uh, nakabuo ng mas maraming... Uh, nagbuo nagbuo ng maraming uh, sistema at uh, pulisiya ang mga Kastila uh, para mas uh, ma-control yung mga locals di ba the, the the Tagalogs or the locals na nandoon doon at uh, at ma isolate sila sa isang lugar kaya nagkaroon ng pagbubuo ng tinatawag na rise of the pueblo system So alam naman natin kanina, 'di ba? Uh, Tagalog, they live in a linear form. They're following the the rivers. Dito, kailangan mo nang pumasok sa isang uh, pueblo, 'di ba? Walled city. Well, one good example of that is Intramuros. So bakit? Uh, well, the, the the authorities, the the colonial authorities, they were able to encourage the locals, the newly baptized locals, 'di ba? To live within the walls because of their Uh, duty as a Christian, di ba? Kailangan magsimba every week. So, yung mga nakatira sa malalayo, paano sila makakapagsimba uh, every week? How can they attend to their responsibility as Christians? Di ba? Eh, ang promise, kapag ka naging Christian ka and you were able to fulfill your task as Christian, diretso ka sa langit, di ba? You will enjoy uh, living in the, another world with uh, with God. Diba? Eh, kasi uh, ang, ang nagawa ng mga pare, ng mga missionary during that time, uh, from being uh, pagan diba? or uh, polytheistic, animes, uh, na-convert nila yung mga locals, these Tagalog locals, into uh, Christian Catholic. Diba? So isipin nyo lang yung mga matatanda na naging kristyano. Nagmamadali sila kasi ang tagal nilang naging uh, pandemonic or barbaric sa mata ng mga Kastila kasi yun yung def- definition nila ng kultura, tradisyon, paniniwala na meron tayo bago sila dumating. Diba? Nagmamadali sila kung, kung paano nila mapupulfill yung, yung responsibility nila as Christian. So talagang they, were, they migrated from their old location inside this Pueblo system. So sa Pueblo system, it's a walled city. ba? Diba? Yun yung pinaka ma, 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 anong picture niya. It's covered by walls. Kasi sa labas, yung mga taong nasa labas ng walls, they were considered as barbaric. ba? Diba? Or non-baptized locals. So alag, ang halaga nito, nung pagbuo ng Pueblo system ng mga Kastila, ba? Diba? In establishing their power and authority among the locals. So therefore, Paano siya nabuo? 'Di ba? Anong anong ginamit ng Makastila? Nagmagic para mabuo tong mga walls, itong mga mga structures, newly developed structures. No. 'Di ba? They they need uh, structural uh, help from the locals through its labor force and at the same time the passive giver, 'di ba? So yung paggamit ng pagta-trans uh, fur ng ng resources, 'di ba? The bricks and several other Uh, sem, uh, uh, materials needed to construct, di ba? Ang ilog pasig ang nag-witness nun or ang, ang gumawa nun, di ba? So, syempre, ang labor force ay uh, through lo, polo e servicio ng sa mga locals and several other slaves na captives ng mga Kastila, di ba? Pwedeng Chinese, Malay, or mga Africans, di ba? Para mabuo itong mga walls at uh, uh, planned Uh, city structures nung colonial times. So sa Pasig, lahat yun pinapadaan. Kaya kasama nung pag ng Pueblo system is yung paggamit sa, sa ilog Pasig okay? nung panahon ng mga Kastila. So ito, now let's proceed with the polities and power structures uh, uh, nearby Pasig okay? or in the river itself. So by the late 18th century, political and economic changes in Europe were finally beginning to affect Spain and of course the Philippines because we're part of uh, we're uh, part of the Spanish colonial government. So dito makikita niyo yung transition of of different uh, uh, power changes, 'di ba, in in Europe na nakakaapekto sa atin. One is uh, the passing of Cadiz Constitution, 'di ba, that uh, made uh, other tough work from the old colonial government lighter 
paano yon like for example yung uh, idea of tribute di ba the Philippines uh, as a colonial government of uh, the the Philippines as a colony of Spain uh, during uh, 16th to 18th century we we became a bad but we became a vassal because we're rendering three things di ba uh, we have tribute or tributo ito yung buwis na binabayad natin Uh, reales ang, ang, ang pambayad dyan. Usually, pataas siya ng pataas. Kaya nga nung nabwisit na sila nung uh, pagsara ng 18th century, uh, they, they wanted to uh, remove uh, tribute system. And fortunately, nung nagkaroon tayo ng representative sa Cadiz Constitution, we were able to amend this uh, tribute system. That's why during the time of Bonifacio and the Katiponeros, ang pinunit nila hindi tributo bagkus ito ay sedula. Di ba? Na mas mura kumpara sa tributo. The next we have bandala. It's uh, an idea of uh, for selling of your product, 'di ba? Or sa pilit ng pagbebenta ng mga produkto na meron ka, 'di ba, sa Spanish authorities. And lastly is polo e service or yung polo um, forced labor, okay? So dito nagkakaroon ng malaking pagbabago kasi uh, the the Spaniards they're trying to win our hearts again and at the same time uh, they're using Uh, the idea of reformation in order to keep us bind to them, diba? as their colony. So Philippine localities started uh, the campaign for independence and at the same time, uh, we have the idea of uh, uh, different reforms uh, posted by a group of uh, Filipino. So during the time, uh, we have this development of different uh, groups such as Uh, the illustrado so yes it was started by um, well not the, the illustrados but uh, those uh, groups na anti spain na merong anti spanish sentiment diba so nangyari yan nung uh, nabuo yung uh, uh, Russia, do we have the idea of the priest who uh, became critical to this uh, uh, policy of Uh, of the Spanish friars, di ba? About regularization movement. So, uh, they counter it through having secularization movement. So, after that, lalo na dumami yung mga katutubo na nagkaroon ng kampanya para sa reforma. So, yan yung mga illustrators na nag-aral sa ibang bansa, uh, including Rizal and uh, Del Pilar and several others. And uh, through this education, they were able to help, di ba? Navigate Uh, this campaign for independence and reform. So the goal of fundamental social change manifests in the nationalization of friar lands by the Manolas Republic and ultimately frustrated with the power and resilience of entrenched institutions. So still, we have this problem of uh, land distribution and at the same time, uh, uh, territorial ruling. Why? Because if you're going to reflect on our map, diba, we are actually, what? We are scattered, di ba? We are divided by waters. Kaya nga, nung, nung papalaya na tayo sa kamay ng mga Kastila at kung bakit nasakop tayo ulit ng mga Amerikano, it's because of uh, 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 dito? walang loyalty ng kapwa Pilipino sa kapwa niya because of regionalism. Di ba? So, since we are separated or divided by bodies of water, uh, we wanted to lead uh, our own region Diba, without the idea of a unified archipelago. So, ayan ang nangyayari. So, still, we have this rapid uh, structural development uh, as by uh, colonial government. So, by this time, it's uh, Spain, still Spain and the Americans. Diba? So, we have uh, the uh, rapid construction of different churches, bridges, uh, roads, diba? in order to Uh, to highlight development. Kasi yun, yun din yung way ng mga Kastila para isilent yung mga, uh, yung mga nagre-reforma. Diba? They wanted to win the hearts of the elite. Diba? Not the masses. Because the masses or this uh, unsungs, diba? they cannot prosper uh, to, to do revolution without the help of the, uh, the elite. Diba? Kaya nga isa yun sa mga advice ni Rizal kay Uh, kay Bonifacio bago niya isa katuparan ng kanyang uh, plano or pagtatangkang revolusyon. Diba? You need to win the hearts of uh, the elite in Manila diba? for you to prosper and for, for you to receive help from them in purchasing ammunitions. Diba? So ganun din yung nangyari dito. Um, tinarget ng mga Kastila na i-win yung heart ng mga elite 
di ba? Para mapatahimik yung mga gusto ng reforma. So paano? Structural development. So yung bahay ni Don, ganyan. Uh, yung mansion ni ganyan. Papagawaan ng maayos na tulay, maayos na kalsada. Di ba? Para hindi na maputik. Di ba? Uh, yung mansion ni ganyan, uh, papagawa ng uh, extension or what, di ba? para maging maayos. Di ba? I think that's, uh, that's also happening today in the Philippines. Di ba? We have this different build, build, build project of the government. Uh, but the idea is what uh, is the real problem in, in the Philippine society? It's not about uh, lack of trains. It's not about uh, the underground, but it's what? An internal problem, di ba? Uh, a, a political issue called corruption and several other incapabilities in of our leaders to lead. Okay? So, ganun yung nangyari dito. Um, so, syempre, naging witness again yung pasig sa rapid construction ng mga churches. Di ba? Kasi napaka sagrada familia, religyosa ng mga Pilipino at ng mga katutubo. So, since... They were develop. They were able to develop different churches, de ba? Sabi nga ni uh, Marx, de ba? Religion is the science hope of the masses. So, meron na silang simbahan na fulfill nila in duty nila as a Christian. Therefore, napapatahimik sila at lalong uh, uh, maniniwala sila na kailangan nila ang Espanya. Well, I think that's the reason why Spain were able to reach uh, more than three, uh, reach three century more than three centuries of uh, colonization in the Philippines. Because of this development, diba, they initiated uh, through time. Okay, So um, uh, aside from that, uh, the, the, the society uh, were, were able to, to give birth to, to different uh, groupings. Diba? Kasi nga, um, kailangan ng uh, ito, yung paring regular, paring secular, dumadami yung mga uh in structures structures yung simbahan yung uh, what else government offices so kailangan ng mga uh, professional at ng mga taong uh, uh, itatalaga dito so in 18 uh, uh, what you call this in 18 early 18th century they uh, ref, they created a reform sa education diba? para um para magkaroon ng development not only in the structures but also uh, in the people. Okay? So the church political power of that period manifests in the architecture. So yun nga, since nagkaroon ng built, built, built during that time at nagawa yun through the Pasig River, di ba, the transfer of lumber, woods, di ba, concretes or yung mga materials na gagamitin, di ba, they had been designed to withstand attacks during revolts and rebellions, giving the churches the appearance of fortresses. So not only fortresses as a, uh, a safeguard of faith to the Catholic Church, but a fortress to uh, revolution, di ba? or uh, yung pagtatangkang pag uh, reforma or revolt na mga katutubo. So through that, lalong nagkaroon ng uh, image, di ba? Uh, strong image ang mga colonizers, yung mga Kastila sa uh, sa mata ng mga katutubo. I think it was also done in in the time of the the Americans. Why? Di ba? Um, on the early onset of the arrival of the Americans, aside from establishing uh, themselves, di ba? Militarily, di ba? Kasi they established civil government. Uh, they were able to establish structural development, di ba? One is the, the construction of different schools, di ba? Philippine Normal School, uh, different uh, bridges, they reconstructed uh, different bridges, di ba? And bago dumating yung mga Kastila, like for example, the, Muse the El Deposito, di ba? The, 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 the concept of a water system for uh, irrigation and at the same time sa patubig, or uh, para sa maiinom ng tao diba, in, the, in the city, they, they constructed that in order to, uh, to give good image diba, to the locals. Okay? So part ng development na yan ang Pasig. So now let's proceed with uh, economic environment and transactions within Pasig River. So from uh, political, uh, uh, well, uh, power that lies within the structures, Diba? And uh, now we're going to proceed with the, the transactions. 
economic uh, transaction. So dito, paano ba siya nabuo? Well, it all started uh, when uh, when the people who've got resources and, and help from the river uh, were able to develop uh, themselves, di ba? Parang nung prehistorical times, di ba? Kaya sila nabuhay sa tabi ng uh, ilog, di ba? Or bodies of water uh, para mabuhay, then they were able to prosper. Now, uh, during 19th century, uh, nagkaroon ng ano ng panibagong uh, wave of development, di ba? So, uh, from 16th to uh, early 18th century, uh, that's the peak of the galleon trade. No? So ang, ang nangyari dyan, uh, na-stop yung galleon trade nung pagdating ng uh, uh, late part of 18th century. So uh, ano yung nangyari sa Ilog Pasig? It became, uh, it still be, it, it became busy as well. Diba? Na, kasi yung galleon trade sa Manila Bay ang, ang, ang dock nun eh. Tapos ano mangyayari after? So yung mga kasko, yung mga maliliit na bangka, sila yung magdadala, magta-transfer ng produkto from the galleon, di ba? From uh, different locations in Manila and Luzon, no? So dito no na stop yung galleon, ano na yung mga nangyari? So here, um, isa sa magandang uh, tingnan natin is uh, a rise of a new uh what you call this? Rise of uh, new groupings in the Philippine society. So the growth of commercial agriculture resulted in the appearance of a new class. So alongside the land holdings of the church and the rise estates of the pre-Spanish nobility, there arose hacendas of coffee, hemp, and sugar, often the property of enterprising Chinese-Filipino mestizos. So during this time, nagkakaroon na ng tiwala yung mga Spaniards sa ilang uh, mixed-blooded uh, locals such as the Sanglay, Diba? or the Chinese mesti Chinese Filipino mestizos. So nagkaroon ng boom tong mga uh, sanglay na to, Chinese Filipino mestizos, sila Rizal, diba? Like Mercado family, diba? Sanglay sila. And uh, pinagkatiwalaan sila ng mga paring Kastila or ng mga Spanish authorities to run their lands, diba? That's why the Mercado family they're, they're leasing in the Calamba Hacienda, no? So uh, lumago yung kanilang business at therefore uh, umangat sila sa lipunan. No? So some of the families that gained prominence in the 19th century have continued to play an important role in Philippine economics and politics. So in what way? Diba? So since, uh, tingnan natin yung Mercado family. Diba? So since the Mercado family were able to create uh, uh, what's called this, hacendas in southern part of Luzon, diba? uh, particularly in Calamba, uh, merong increase of uh, Manila hemp, uh, big, pa, pa, rice, crops, and several ad- tubo, di ba? Greens, di ba? Kaya nga Rizal, Rizal, greens yung kanilang product. So since lumago, saan nila dadalhin yun? They need to, uh, to transfer that to Manila. So in what way, di ba? So dadaan ng Manila Dibay, Dibay at yung iba sa Pasig River. Okay? So... Dito, the demand for Philippine sugar and abaca or Manila hemp uh, grew and the volume of exports to uh, different uh, parts of the world, including Europe, uh, be- even became further after the completion of the Suez Canal in 1869. So since uh, mas uh, dumami yung uh, tao sa buong mundo during this time, and uh, syempre kapag dumami yung tao, yung consumption dumadami din, di ba? there's an increase uh, towards their demands, di ba? Uh, nung na-open yung Suez Canal, it uh, asked for more resources from different parts of the world, including the Philippine archipelago as a, as a colony of Spain. So we need to supply uh, the sugar, the abaca, uh, banana needs of, uh, of Spain and several other European cities during this time. Okay? So nung dumami yung uh, mga tao na nag uh, nagiging abala sa pag-establish ng, uh, ng encomienda system and commercial agriculture, uh, syempre, dumami yung activity uh, sa pag-transfer tra- or transportation ng material from one place to another. So ang pinakamabisang gamitin ay ang Pasig River. That's why here, in this picture, you can find uh, different activities. Diba? 
uh, economic activities na ginagawa sa uh, sa Bunganga at sa Pasig River. So we have here cascos. So these are the small ships that uh, run in the whole Pasig River. Tapos ito ay uh, a scene in a market. Then uh, aside from the cascos, I think this one is in uh, Manila in uh, and the circle okay so nilagay ko to kasi famous ngayon ang and the circle i sorry because of its uh, glamour glamouring news new look made by Yorme so may pailaw na yan so before uh, dagat yan sir bakit dagat na yan eh hindi naman dagat ang itsura niyan ngayon di ba um repatriated land na po yung yung uh, area na yon ng uh, Maynila today because this whole uh, uh, pier 15 today Um, ano yan eh, tubig po yan, dagat na po yan. Kaya nga, nung binaril si Rizal sa Luneta, di ba, nung naglalakad siya, di ba, ito yung Luneta, uh, sakikita niya yung dagat or what. Kasi yung, yung araw, di ba, nag-request pa nga siya. Kasi dagat na yun. Okay? So, ayan, and the circle, makikita nyo. Tapos ito yung Pasig, papasok na yan. Di ba? At makikita nyo maraming barko na nakadak. Okay? And uh, aside from that, uh, the rivers also, Uh, yes, since it separate uh, the other uh, part of Manila, kailangan ng bridge, di ba? So, um, na-witness din dito yung pag, uh, pag-construct ng mga architectural development uh, uh, para uh, ma-solve yung demands ng uh, different, uh, the demands of growing population of uh, Manila during that time. So, that's why they established bridges, di ba? that connects uh, Binondo and Intramuros. Then here, makikita nyo, uh, paliguan ng kalabaw. So, sir, ano po ba yung kinahalaga niyan? Okay, so the carabaos, uh, they used to carry wagons or uh, the the chariot itself. Di ba? Kasi common sa atin ang water buffalo or or carabao. So, sila yung uh, humihila ng mga uh, ng mga kargamento, di ba? ng mga manila hemp na mabibigat, mga saging, mga ab- abaka at kung ano-ano pa that's why doon naliligo sila sa Pasig di ba so yung yung uh, yung tao dito yung lamig at ginhawa na nadudulot ng ilog Pasig sa Kalabaw ay nakakatulong din sa ekonomiya during that time so habang may naliligo ng Kalabaw diyan may naglalaba <laughs> actually ito makita niyo di ba uh, sa left picture uh, na doon yung nag uh, uh, ano nang kalabaw ayun na tinatapakan niya pa yung kalabaw habang naliligo then adjacent to to those carabao swimming in the river ay itong mga Pilipina locals na naglalaba okay so that's a typical scene in in Pasig River during 19th century um i think it's common in other uh, places too like in India in Indus Valley Diba? Hindi naman dahil baboy tayo na may kalabaw na liligo tapos naglalaba ka ng damit mo, baboy. Hindi. Um, it's actually a practice. Diba? In India nga, um, sa kabilang banda, merong nagsusunog ng bangkay, ng hayop or ng tao. Tapos itatapon sa Indus uh, River. Tapos sa kabilang banda, may umiinom ng tubig, may naglalaba, may nagre-ritual. Okay? So doon mo makikita yung ano, pagiging complex ng role ng river sa everyday uh, Uh, lives of uh, the locals diba or how our customs and and practices revolve around this uh, river then ayan uh, another picture of uh, the locals uh, na naglalaba at nag naliligo nagpapalamig and then aside from that is um ito yung mga kargamento at yung mga produktong nabili so we have the banana Um, aside sa banana, we have uh, ito, copra, di ba, na uh, hinihila lang siya ng mga casco or actually these cascos, ang daming role ng casco, di ba, ito yung itsura niya, di ba, uh, pwedeng ganyan kalaki, meron din, it, it, it varies uh, in different sizes, no, so yung mga casco, pwedeng water taxi, di ba, kung mapapanood nyo yung idea ni Quezon, di ba, sa movie, uh, nung pumayag siya na pumunta dito yung mga Jews, di ba, during World War II, ay, b- before World War II, uh, to save them, di ba, sa Nazi uh, SS movement ng Germany, they were uh, brought to Malacanang using cascos, di ba? So, yung maliliit na water taxis na yun. That's why, if you're going to, to Bataan in, 
uh, Las Casas Acusar, makikita nyo talaga yung scene. Diba? Ganun na ganun yung scene ng mga kasko at yung gamit nila. Another is uh, these cascos or water taxis. It also carries uh, passengers as a water taxi nga. And at the same time, uh, ginagamit din siya ng mga Chinese. <laughs> ng mga Chinese na nangungulekta ng dumi. Before, ang trabaho ng mga Chinese, kasi we don't have the idea of uh, comfort rooms. Diba? The, though may mga structural development that time, walang ano, walang konsepto ng palikuran no sa na CR ilan lang yung mga uh, government offices and taha, bahay ng mga matataas na tao so sa mga normal na tao di ba number one is uh, uh, di ba, paano na kolekta or paano sila dumudumi di ba we have two way one is sa mga locals overhang the latrine yung parang direkta na sa ilog kaya nga dumumi yung ilog pasig or flying saucer <laughs> may ganun ng issue the other one is yung collection no parang uh, tapon basura ngayon di ba pero ang idea is uh, this uh, uh, jebs di ba yung dumi kinokolekta ng mga uh, chinese or ng mga locals di ba using uh, uh, yung taho, <laughs> yung lagay ng taho na parang ganun na nakalagay sa water taxi sa kasko at isa-isahin nila yung bahay, 'di ba? Uh, they will navigate uh, different uh, canals, 'di ba? Kasi binubuo pa ng iba't ibang canals, 'di ba? Uh, ngayon kasi tinambakan na yung TAF, 'di ba? Or in different parts of Manila, pero before canals 'yan. Okay? So ayan, dinadala yung copra and uh, what else uh, different uh, resources diba manila hemp banana uh, different fruits diba from one place to another so ayan ah, sorry so dito makita niyo yung uh, typical market scene so it's very uh, overcrowded and what they're doing they're actually waiting for the casco diba na magta-transfer sa kanila from other side of Manila or different parts of uh, Manila. Actually hanggang ngayon ginagawa yan sa Mandaluyong and Makati, 'di ba? Para mag-cross from Makati to Mandaluyong, they need to have this uh, small boat, 'di ba? Na may bayad ngayon, I think 15 pesos. Na-try ko pa yun before. So, uh, ganun yung ginagawa before. Uh, at yung yung Pasig, uh, yun ay naging business ng mga locals, 'di ba? Yung paggamit ng mga maliliit na bangka na yan at natawag nating kasko na sa pagdadala ng mga Uh, mga locals sa mga pupuntahan nila. Okay, so another picture of uh, a huge water taxi or casco. At ito, ito yung sinasabi kong tawid. Uh, sa Mandaluyong yan eh. Um, Makati and Mandaluyong area may ganyan. Basta nadudun yung, yung Pasig River. So patawid ang tawag dyan. So makikita ninyo. Uh, ginagamit, may group lang na nagko-connect from, from both ends. ba diba? Para ma matawid yung mga tao. And uh, during the early part of American administration, uh, they created this lift bridge. Though it's not uh, 19th century anymore, it's the early part of 20th century. Mahalagang tignan to. Bakit, may, bakit may construction ng metal diba, that created this lift bridge diba, in the Estero Binondo? Makikita nyo yung, ano, uh, yung dumami yung population. Uh, therefore, they have a lot of demands, needs, Diba na kailangang uh, kailangang uh, isolve, diba through uh, using different uh, mechanisms such as this, diba by establishing a lift bridge. Kasi nga dumami yung tao at yung area na to sa Binondo ay naging uh, commercial center during this time. Uh, yung mga Amerikano, uh, they uh, instigated the creation of different Uh, uh, structural development, metallic structural development such as this. And um, ayan, the river remains the main source of supply for the vast majority of the population who must profit from low tides to draw a water that remains uh, briny and unsavory. So ano ibig sabihin nito? So since we have a lot of demands as the population grows, uh, we have a lot of demands kaya yung mga dumi kasi yung uh, mga dumi na kinokolekta ng mga inchik at ng mga locals sa bahay-bahay tinatapon din nila sa Pasig di ba and sa Pasig sa bunga nga ng Mani- ng Marikina River kung saan nag uh, nadudun yung ano eh uh, base ang tawag doon uh, catch basin di ba na kung saan uh, parating binabaha 
uh, naging ano siya, naging uh, ang problema is uh, we have overpopulation, therefore pollution. 'Di ba? Ang naging problema ng Pasig today. Kaya ngayon, 'di ba? Uh, ang, ang daming nangyari sa sa kasaysayan. Like for example, uh, yung uh, mga yung mga kasko, yung mga malilit na bangka, naging malalaking barko. Okay? Sa Pier 15. At hindi lang yun. Nung before pa, actually, uh, early part of 20th century, makikita nyo na ito. This picture, ito, Pasig River Wharf area next to Magallanes Drive. It was taken nung um, uh, 19, early 1900s. Diba? Makikita nyo na meron ng mga industrialized ship diba? from uh, the west diba? na nagda-dock sa, sa Ilog Pasig na nagkaroon ng, result, nagkaroon ng resulta sa mga oil Uh, at mga dumi nito. Okay? And uh, aside from that, uh, yun yung mga lumagong komersyo sa sa tabi ng Ilog Pasig, di ba? Um naka uh, naging rason din yon para dumumi yung yung ilog. Though um, it was actually part of the development, uh, yung colonial government hindi na nila nabigyang pansin yung paglalatag ng policy in order to uh, lessen the uh, the negative impact of this uh, growing commercial need during that time so yes uh, the pasig is there it's uh, it, it will it were able to fulfill its task as a major transport way of different goods and services during uh, colonial times diba during 19th century yung yung mga authorities both the locals and the colonial authorities we weren't able to give good policies in uh, in order to help it breathe di ba kaya nga ngayon napakalaking problema ng ilog pasig so takeaways uh, sorry tapos na po uh, yeah again this picture um it was in it was taken in in um in pasig river pasig river po yan hindi niyo na makita ngayon kasi may lighthouse pa yan before okay hindi lang uh, ang ang ilang lugar sa may, sa Pilipinas ang may lighthouse even before may lighthouse sa Pasig. So by the way, um, many of my pictures used in this presentation were from uh, J. T. Well, John Tewell from uh, his collection. So it's very available in Pinterest and uh, uh, in 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 Google. So just type Pasig, you can find a lot of pictures about it. So um, well, it's It came from his collection, from his different archival research in Michigan, University of Michigan, in Bentley Library, in University of California, and uh, archives dito sa Pilipinas, and uh, different uh, archives in uh, in Spain, such as Archivo General in Madrid, and several other. So, gusto ko lang sabihin, baka sabihin niyo kasi ninakaw ko. No, it's from Tewell, okay? So, lastly, let's proceed with this uh, short uh, takeaways. So the first one, uh, uh, there was this uh, political and economic transfer, transformation of uh, the Pasig River. So makikita naman natin from its uh, usual, simple uh, uh, position diba? as a river during prehistorical times, it developed uh, according to the needs of uh, the, the people uh, living nearby. Diba? So, yung sa prehistorical times, yung mga uh, inhabitants, diba? early inhabitants of this archipelago who used this uh, river as their way to do communal living diba? and establish themselves according to kinship tradition up to the colonial times na, ng 19th century na kung saan uh, naging, na, naging rampant yung activities different transactions and exchange economic transactions and and exchanges diba? that's why it was uh, it was uh, ruined or uh, na ano siya na, uh, na what the other uh, other term for ruined R- ruined or uh, na masyadong na maximize yung yung river so the only presence of water in Metro Manila is an important way to see how geopolitics and political economy happened in the past. So makikita natin na uh, uh, naging uh, simbolo ng uh, ng uh, dynamics in in Philippine history yung Pasig River, 'di ba? No paano yung mga locals 
uh, they controlled it in order to establish themselves diba, in Sultanate of Manila at yung mga mananakop, diba, they were able to use Pasig River as uh, as a way to control uh, the, the the locals diba, and establish themselves as a colonial uh, authority diba, or ruler of uh, this Uh, region, di ba? So there's geopolitics there, di ba? And yung Pasig, sobrang it's situated in uh, in a very positioned uh, area na kung saan it stretches from different parts of uh, Manila. Okay? That's why it also gave birth to different political economic uh, challenges, di ba? Not only flooding or uh, pollution, but Uh, several other uh, economic problems. Then the river had always been a vital vehicle of industry and trade, a reflection of our culture and heritage around which countless poems and testimonies had been written attesting to its pristine elegance and functional legacy. I think the Pasig River can be uh, lined up with other major rivers in Southeast Asia and in the world. Like for example, in Thailand, they have Chao Phraya, in uh, in uh, china they have this yellow uh, yellow river um it, um, it uh, it can be uh, it can be as good as them diba? because it uh, it it witness how uh, colorful yung past natin and how uh, how the Filipino people and and our colonizers uh, uh, develop through time. Diba? So lahat yun ang witness ng, ng Pasig River. That's why it's really important for us to refresh our uh, ideas and different stories attached to uh, Pasig River. Diba? Yung mga reflections of uh, our culture and heritage done by our writers, di ba? about uh, Ilog Pasig, we should read all those things for us to see uh, the different faces of Pasig River. So I just only, uh, I just only uh, posted or presented to you uh, two faces, di ba? Uh, economic and political uh, face, uh, faces of uh, Pasig River during 19th century. But if you're going to reflect more of it, there are a lot more faces, di ba? Pasig River can, can offer uh, a Filipino not only in history but uh, in in terms of uh, the the development of our nation and its people so here what i wanted to highlight is the importance of uh, uh, geography or the, the idea of geopolitics na uh, as a student of history we should uh, see the importance of location and how it Uh, gave birth to different narratives or stories of the past. Because here, Pasig River or yung Ilog Pasig mismo, it really portrays a lot of uh, a lot of uh, narratives, diba? stories and experiences from different time, from pre-colonial times up to the present time. So, um, kasi ang dami sa atin dumadaan lang ng Pasig River. Ako, Uh, I'm teaching in in PUP, and I'm very proud to to say that um, in 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 PUP you can see Pasig River, diba? Actually, we're like Harvard, diba? We have Pasig River at the back of our campus, and in front we have PNR, no? So we have a very unique uh, 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 status as a state university in 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 Manila. I really miss PUP. But anyway, um, I, I think today more than ever, we should uh, highlight more of different narratives and, and stories about, uh, about different rivers, not only Pasig River um, in Philippine history. Okay, So that's all. Thank you very much for listening. Maraming salamat Sir Jefferson Mendez sa iyong binahaging kasaysayan ng Ilog Pasig. Bago tayo magtungo sa Q&A part, ay ako muna ay mangungulit sa mga narito sa Ilog Pasig na kasalukuyang namamasyal. 
Magandang araw tayo. Ano ang pangalan niyo po? Ben Villamar. Kayo po tatay? Ano? Edgardo Betani. Magandang araw po. Tatanungin ko lang po, kung gano'ng kahalaga po sa inyo ang ilog pasi? Ay, mahalagang mahalaga po yan. Kasi dito kami nagpapiyakin. Dito kami nanguli ng isda. Maraming bagay ng pagdaan po sa inyo kung matutok ka. So, meron pa rin po talagang nahuhuling isda mo sa ngayon. Ngayon, nakahuling kasama ko rin. Walong, ano, elapya at saka dalawang night fish. Kala ko po puro janitor fish na lang po yung laman niya. Hindi naman kinakain dyan. Pero naabutan niyo pa po ba nung malinis pa ang ilog pa si? Oo. Matandaan na kami. Ito, lito. Pagkagat gano'n, maiaangat mo kaagad eh. Hindi na yung hintay mo pang hilahin. Oo, oh, kasi di pang kita. Hmm, nabibing yun eh. Mga oh. talag na huli ng lolo. Oh, maraming siya. Nung dumami na ang kupa niya. Nung dumami na. Yung na. Naging ano na, oo. Oh, Unti-unti oh. nang naging pulyutin. Lumago. Nakakapero dito. Nakang pinabang na dito. Diyan sila rin sila po ng mga pangkulang. Saka yung basura. Oo, oh, mga basura, mga kalakal. Sa so, tumulang so, mga pangalit. Sa tabinilog, di ba? Dinasiyan nila yung basura. Kaya pilipino rin ang bumabuy sa kalikasan natin. Tama. Ah, maswerte sila tatay kasi naabutan pa nilang malinis ang ilog pasig noong 1950s. So, Ayo, jadi. Yang nak nak tahu, yang nak tahu ni nak kau nak, ano silapnya, nak jadi orang naik si. Ada nama nak pun siapa lagi? Oh, pun beginner ngasi tante naik satu. Atuh tu tahu mana ni selamat ya, selamat orang. So ayam yang apa kasi? Selamat nak tahu. Na nabutan pala nila tatay na malinis pa ang ilog pasig noong 1950s to 60s. Kaya naman, ang sabi nila sa mga kabataan, ay ingatan nito para naman sa mga susunod na henerasyon ay maabutan pang malinis ang ilog pasig. Back to you guys! Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, ako po ang magiging uh, moderator for our question and answer for our lecture for today. So, um, we have three questions for Mr. Jefferson Mendez. And the first question is from Mr. Bugan Munoz. And the question is, how did the Pasig River influence the Spaniards' decision in establishing its political system as symbolized by its political structures along its banks. Okay, pwede na. Uh, thank you sa question. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, the Spaniards uh, viewed uh, Pasig as uh, a very important uh, bodies of water. Same with the idea, same with the idea of uh, putting it as a uh, Venice of uh, the East, yung Manila, because it has uh, Pasig River. So since it has already this river that runs all throughout the city, diba, it became easier to the Spaniards to locate different uh, uh, polities, diba, kung saan nila itatayo yung, uh, yung ayuntamiento, yung simbahan. Kasi yung, yung pagta-transfer ng material from one place to another ay sobrang hirap during that time. We don't have this uh, advanced structures 
uh, like today, di ba? So yung yung role ng passive griever, uh, kung saan siya nagsisituate at kung saan siya dumadaloy, sinundan nyo ng mga Kastila in order to uh, uh, put themselves I'm talking about the structures, okay? in, uh, Spanish uh, structures in in its location. Okay, so yeah, hindi ko pala nasabi yun. Um, for them, it's the Manila is the Venice of the East. It's because of the Pasig River. Thank you sa question. Okay, so dahil dun sa strategic location, no? ng Pasig River. Okay, so our, our second question is from Mr. Neil Junio. Um, ano pong impact sa ekonomiya or politika nung nagsimulang dumumi yung Ilog Pasig? Well, um, it will characterized by different period of time. Like for example, uh, during the uh, the peak of Spanish uh, colonial period, uh, merong pollution na nagaganap. Actually, the the hygienists, kasi ano eh, uh, 17th century nung na discover sa France yung pasteurization and highlight yung uh, hygiene and how to uh, to be aware with the idea of microbes. Diba? or microorganism. Uh, so nung nung nangyari yan dito sa sa Pilipinas, diba? while having this uh, Spanish colonial government, hindi nila pinansin. They keep on uh, uh, creating economic gains, diba? Kahit uh, dumudumi na yung Pasig, diba? So may may economic gains pa rin kahit may pollution na. So na, na, nangyari yung pag uh, pag pagkakaroon ng backward in terms of economic gains or the economy itself ay hindi naging stagnant uh, dahil sa dumi sa Pasig nung panahon ng mga Amerikano. Di ba, dumami yung, yung uh, pandemic actually. Actually, uh, nung panahon ng mga uh, Amerikano, uh, one of their identified achievement was the establishment of different hospitals, right? Especially PGH. Bakit? It was because of the, uh, what you call this? Uh, pandemic because of water na iniinom dahil yung dumi nga ng Pasig River ay contaminated na nito yung mga water na iniinom ng mga tao sa Manila. Okay? So tingin ko dahil doon, uh, mas lalong uh, nabigyan pansin yung kahalagahan ng hygiene um, in the society. Uh, kaya itong mga Amerikano, uh, they help us to develop hospitals and several other uh, systems and incorporated good policies to improve uh, hygiene in in Manila and perhaps uh, lessen the pollution sa sa Pasig River. So yon. Okay, I thank you for the answer. And for our last question, uh, this is from Mr. Jericho Vargas, uh, Historic Sites Development Officer 2 of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. The Pasig River was a reflection of a vibrant social history given the activities, livelihood, and interactions it saw during the distant past. But today, Pasig River no longer seems to exhibit such vibrancy given, given its present decaying state. Uh, the question now is, how does knowing about Pasig River's uh, past contribute to the present day's attempts to revive the river? And how can we capitalize on its history for its eventual redevelopment? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, siguro sasagot, sasagotin ko yan from the vantage point of uh, uh, a student of history. I think uh, we have uh, attempted many times to uh, revive or uh, uh, Re reha rehabilitate Pasig River, but uh, many of the policies or the the projects only focus with its commercial use, diba? and uh, scientific and and some uh, business related uh, uh, what you call this initiative, diba? or interest. So dito kung di kung babalikan natin yung role niya sa pas, diba? from uh, its uh, location, di ba? temporal and uh, spatial location in the past, mas magkakaroon ng, uh, ng uh, what you call this, uh, mas, mas magkakaroon ng ano eh, mas uh, sustainable and uh, innovative ways to uh, solve the problems that we have in Ilog Passive nowadays. Di ba? So I think yun yung kulang sa mga government policies and initiative that we have today. 
uh, diba, they need to seek advice from uh, historical uh, people uh, historical experts diba especially from the academe diba hindi lang scientists hindi lang uh, uh, hindi lang yung mga expert about uh, uh, about water quality sanitation diba kailangan din yung expert from history para mas situate kung saan nagmumula yung problem diba kasi nanggaling yan sa sa history so I think that's a good question. Um, and this is perhaps the reason why I wanted to talk more about uh, Pasig River uh, today. Kasi we can get a lot of answers to history. Diba? So um, here in Europe, they cannot, uh, they cannot uh, what you call this, put a project in, in the river without uh, assessing it historically. Diba? Or titignan kung may heritage or uh, may uh, conservation uh, project na 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 tao dito na sasagasaan. So sa atin hindi kasi ganoon ang uh, ang ginago even the Sagip Ilog Pasig project of uh, Lopez. No. Um, they only focus with basura, uh, the scientific way how to solve the the pollution but not with the historical uh, value of uh, the Pasig River itself. Okay, so ayun po, adun po natatapos ang ating question and answer portion. And we would like to thank Mr. Jefferson Mendez for again reminding us that the role of rivers uh, are that the roles of rivers are not only limited to being a passageway for trade and commerce, not only limited as a source of food, but also it has it has been inspiring and helping uh, molding our traditions and customs. So ayun po. And siguro na rin yung preservation ng ating rivers, not only the Pasig River, but also all Philippine rivers. No? Kasi hindi lamang nito mapapabuti yung ating uh, modern life, but also magpo-provide siya ng window on our shared history and identity. So uh, with that, uh, we, here is our um, shrine curator too of uh, Musayo El Deposito, Mr. Janel Rabusa, for closing remarks. Before we end, we would like to thank all of you for your overwhelming support in the various programs we have conducted in the past weeks in celebration of the Museums and Galleries Month. We thank our speakers, Mr. Francis Christopher Pachon and Mr. Jefferson Mendez, and our moderators, Ms. Catherine Kay Oliveros and Ms. Sara Estubo, for our lecture series focused on the history of the Pasig River. For our online exhibit entitled What We Found Underneath, we also like to thank Ms. Marilyn Dioso, Mr. Yofemi Agbayani, and Ms. Maria Edna Santiago for their great assistance in the exhibition design and content. We also like to uh, acknowledge our head institution, the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, with our chair, Dr. Rene Escalante, Executive Director Restituto Aguilar, our Deputy Executive Director for Administration, Ms. Carmine Darevalo, and our OIC Deputy Executive Director for Programs and Projects, Mr. Alvin Alcid. We also like to thank, of course, our Historic Sites and Education Division with our Chief, Ms. Gina Batuhan, our Supervising Historic Sites Development Officer, Brian Anthony Paraiso, and last but not the least, our very supportive colleagues from the NHGP Museums from the different parts of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. As we close the celebration of the Museums and Galleries Month this year, may we never forget how we were able to surpass the challenges this pandemic has given us. Although this pandemic is not yet over, it is still commendable how museums and galleries were able to continuously adapt in this situation despite the limited resources. This has also given us time to rethink and reevaluate how we can further connect our museums to the Filipinos, especially with the use of the digital and online platform. Indeed, this made us reflect on how we can make their homes an extension of our museums. Even though this is the last day of the Museums and Galleries Month 2020, rest assured that the Museo al Deposito will continue to create informative programs and engaging exhibitions for the emerging generations. We hope that you can join us again in our programs for next year's Museums and Galleries Month. Good day and stay safe.
Ayan. So, ayun po, maraming maraming salamat sa mga nag-participate sa aming lecture uh, for today. At ayun po, mag-ingat po tayong lahat.